push the button. Push the button. Hello, everybody. Now, when I first started making this video, I was on my own in the workshop, six o'clock in the morning, and you can see my brain takes a bit of time to engage. There's a lot of um this and um that, but stick with it. This item is really rare. It's a beautiful thing. You probably never see another one of them in your life, another one of them in your life, and it's worth about 12 grand, so it's serious cash. Where well, I talk about it being our first video at the start, but it turns out it's not our first. We've made a few, and we don't know what order we're actually putting them out in anymore. Um, enjoy. I said um again. <laughs> I can't stop saying them. Um. Hello everybody, uh, welcome back to the channel. Um, this is going to be our first restoration video. Um, I'd just like to start by saying thank you to everybody that subscribed. Um, and everybody that's watched our first sort of little introduction video. I didn't really think it would fetch many views at all, but we've cleared well over a thousand and I'm very grateful for that, so thank you very much. And I think we're on to about 350 subscribers, which I know in YouTube terms is tiny, but to, to us here, it's a big deal and it's nice to know that our efforts are, are appreciated. So thank you for that. Um, this is our first restoration job. This is a Empire marble console table. Um, I can't even begin to tell you how rare these are. And th the reason for that really is the construction of them. They're not that clever. Uh, they're basically and usually a pine frame and they're, they're coated in marble. Obviously the marble's very heavy. It is a very heavy piece of furniture. And every time you move it, those little movements start sort of loosening the frame. And when they do, all that marble drops off. And that's why we're left with this pile. Um, the way they're constructed, you can see they're all, well, let's say they're all about show. But I think they're beautiful things, very decorative. And being from the Empire period, that dates it at about 1810, 1815. Um, but like I say, if you see another one of these in your lifetime, you're lucky. This has come from a client of mine in London collected this from Kensington um, and we're going to restore it, stick it back together and glue it back together. We've got some pieces that are missing off the side of one of these columns and I've got a spare piece of marble which I'm going to cut and use to replace that. We've got a missing brass collar which should sit around here. So we've actually already made the replacement for that and it was the skills of Nick Elphick, the sculptor, so I'll show you those later. Um, but really, it's about the process of sticking this back together. We'll clean it off first, make sure we've got all the bits there, and then stick it back together. Once it's stuck back together and solid, I can start looking at how I'm going to clean it, polish it, and get that fine finish on it that it deserves. Because a piece like this, we're probably looking at about £12,000. We have got the top, that's in one piece and we've got the mirror that goes with it, and that's the part that really helps add the value. When you've got that complete set, it's a very special thing. So I am chuffed to bits to be working on this. We need to do it justice. We need to make it strong, solid, and back to its sort of former glory. I know who you enjoy watching us do our work. Now the bulk of the work sticking this back together is relatively straightforward. Um, we're using a resin, uh, Aral Dye, as I'm sure many of you are familiar with. Um, sets in five minutes, sets clear, and sets super hard. I mean, incredibly strong material. Um, so the process is simple as popping gloves on, protect your hands from the resin, mixing it up, and putting it on small bits at a time. Now, we've got some old broken repairs on this. I'm not going to disrupt them. Um, I'm not going to risk damaging it any further. It's fine that this thing shows a lot of history. Everything else that's left on the front here is solid. So we're just going to have our 
three pieces that make up the rest of the drawer front, the original pieces. Cover them in the Saraldite resin. Make sure we stick them at the key points. Push them together. Sets in about five minutes. We'll give it a bit longer. We'll give it an hour. Um, and when it does, we'll have the drawer front done. Then we'll go over the whole thing using the sewing process to stick it together. Now I'm going to use a lot of Araldite to stick this together. Um, it's like everything I glue up. I prefer to use too much than not enough. Um, so I put it onto a scrap piece of wood, mixing up our Araldite. It's like a 50-50 mix. So you have the resin itself, the glue side of it, and then you have the catalyst. Um, but as I say, I'm going to mix a lot of this up now. Packets. But it's very important. Yeah, it's very important to wear gloves, especially with these chemicals. They're dangerous chemicals. And you do not want them on your skin sinking in and causing you problems. Okay. Mix this together. And now I've got a few minutes before this sets. This is our first piece. Let's clean underneath. So I just need to make sure I coat the contact areas. So obviously the back of it. I want enough for it to push into all those little grooves and nooks and crannies. Oh. Uh, okay. Sorry, I'm going to... I am, and I've got a, <laughs> I've got a red, quick drying resin going off. Sorry, I'll give you a call in a moment. Linda, uh, sure. Yeah, chairs. Okay, okay. Okay, push that on there. Have our little piece that goes under our handle. Push that in there. Slide that underneath. And what I like to see when I push these pieces on is that every crack has resin pushing out of it. And we get it as aligned as possible. And as, as flat as possible on those surfaces. And the amount of resin squishing out from under that fills me with confidence. Check it lines up straight. Straighter than the other repairs, that's for sure. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna leave that to set. What I'll do now is just get a cloth and wipe off the excess around there. The last bit, I'll squish this on. And that is as simple as that process gets. I'll get myself a cloth and I'll wipe off all those drips. And we'll let it set. Now one of the important elements missing off this was one of these brass cuffs. Now they sit on top of the pillars, very decorative, very detailed and very typical of empire period furniture. It's the decoration they used to basically, it's the decoration they used to basically flash the thing up. Um, 
but one was missing and we needed another one. So we called on the skills of Nick Elphick, the artist and sculptor, and he cast me one. The detail and the patina and color he's done is incredible. And you would not tell the difference if I didn't tell you that these were a fake. And we're gonna put the camera on it now and do a real close up and just see if you can spot the difference. There's that funny tool thing. Everything is stuck back on. Now, the thing still looks grubby and it's still got a lot of imperfections and cracks in it, but we can't start filling them cracks until we know what the final color of this is. Now, it's got 200 years of, you know, having a coal fire burning in the old Georgian houses and, you know, and nicotine and cigarette smoke, and that really sticks to furniture, and especially porous material like marble. To clean it up, we're gonna use a car cleaning compound like T-Cut, in fact, we are using T-Cut, a white version and some fine wire wool. And we use that to scrub the dirt off. It will give it quite a polish as well. And when we've got it all clean, we can come back and look at how we're gonna not necessarily try to lose these cracks completely, but just improve the aesthetic of it without taking away from its story and its history and that patina and presence that it has, because it's got that in abundance. So it's scrubbing time. And a little tip as well, we're about to clean this with fine wire wool and tea cut. But if you use a cloth and tea cut, if you've got highly polished timber, it does actually give you a very nice finish. The important thing is though, check a small area because given the fact that car polishes are an abrasive, you have to uh, be careful that you don't take too much off and take your polish off. Okay, so. Marble or is that a painted board? Okay, so car tea cut, given a really good shape. Very fine wire wool, four zero grade. And we'll try a small area and see if we can notice a good difference from where it's cleaned up. Can you see a difference? Subtle, isn't it? Saying subtle and not ineffective. Subtle. Well, I like it. It's not too far. I've got some cleaning up to do. We'll try one of these front areas now. So we take our T cut and our four zero wire wool, and we're just gonna clean up this area here. You ready? results here. Beautiful. It's got soft sheen to it too, which is nice. Do the whole thing. <laughs> and now it's finished. 
a beautiful example of a Empire 1810 marble console table. We're filthy. The thing's back in one piece. We've tried to not over restore it, keeping all its character and history. Its story is still in the piece. A very rare, beautiful thing. I mean, I'm sad to see it go. I probably won't see another one. Um, but it's good for a few more years now and we can go and put it back in its home and that's where it can stay. Lots of screwdrivers. Could you grab me the dark filler and a catalyst, please?